Hey, if you love art or spring or color or alleys, this painting is for you. Okay, so I have a black toned canvas and I've drawn on my simple scene with orange paint. And I love painting on black because it provides a great uh, backdrop for all the color and light to really shine. And I'm putting on some of the base colors that will be kind of in the foreground here. One of the things about painting on black is that it takes several coats to cover the paint um, and get the coverage that you really want. So as this is a sped up version of this painting, you'll see how it, it will take a bit of time to get the, the vibrancy that we want. And sometimes it'll mean going over uh, something more than once to get the highlight colors as vibrant and light as we want. But what's really great is that there is no element in this painting that isn't put there on purpose. There's nothing, there's no white, uh, like if you paint on a white canvas, there's no white shining through on accident. It's only gonna be there because I put it there. And you can see the the road. This is an alley. I love alleys. I love painting alleys. And a lot of times when I see a situation like this, I will just exaggerate the color a little bit. Exaggerating what's there. I, I'm not always making it up, but I, I do, if I see a hint of violet, I might just push that color a little bit more. And I'm working my way from the foreground to the background, generally speaking, when I paint on black because I like the way that it looks. That's really all it comes down to. And there are different elements in this scene. I'm painting a fence here on the right side of the painting. And so I want to add variety to that. I want to add texture to that. And there are little bits of grass and there's a little bush off to the right. And then the the ground essentially of the the street kind of is shaped around those other bushes and grasses and i like alleys because they're so interesting and there are a variety of things to look at like there is a garbage can on the left side and one further back and then there's a fence on the right there's a fence on the left there are telephone poles and buildings, little garage here. And so really what I'm trying to do is work within a realm of light to dark. I know that the darkest value is already on the canvas. So as I'm putting everything on top of that, it's going to be pushing the values into the mid tones and then eventually it will, will get into light values. The light values are going to come at the end. I like to have them on top. And so usually I don't add them right off the bat because I want them to be layered later. There are exceptions sometimes where uh, there's something that's close in the foreground that I want to get into the painting right off the bat. But generally speaking, they come a little bit later. And you can see if you look at the light or the color on the on the road that it's a varied kind of color. And even what I'm putting back there, that's the next layer because the road kind of goes up. It's an alley and it's got a bit of asphalt. It's got some dirt, like some gravel, and it's actually got some brick. This is a, a an interesting alley that, that has all three components to it. So I like to add some texture to my brush strokes. I put some of the brush strokes leading the eye back into the painting. And you can see uh, every every part of the painting you can use different kinds of brush strokes. It kind of makes sense to paint these telephone poles with vertical brush strokes, right? But I will also try to vary the way that those look and I will have light at different points hitting the side of one of the telephone poles and I don't want to paint them all the same color the whole way from the top to the bottom. I have a 
range of colors here in my palette. Titanium white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium orange. I believe that's quinacridone red, ultramarine blue, and black and gray. And so I'm mixing all these other variations out of those colors. This is a light yellow going around on the outside of that small garage but I wanted to get the garbage cans in there so that I could paint the garage around them and know where to put that color paint. Everything in this is a process and it builds, each layer builds on the previous layer. As I get into the garage door, I just changed the color slightly and we have a place where the shadow is hitting the door and also some area of that where the light is hitting the door. The sunlight is coming from the right side. So I've added a nice bit of cadmium yellow light into the white to create a beautiful highlight color. And to me, a painting like this or a scene like this is a perfect place to look at the contrast of warm and cool. The light is warm. It's a late afternoon, evening where the sunlight is coming at a fairly sharp angle. That's why you have the streaks of highlight and light coming across the road at such angles. And yet there's lots of areas of the road or the alley that are in shadow still. That's because the light is really coming from the right, uh, from a, a really low angle. But that also means that the light is very warm. It's the kind of golden hour of the day. And so in these shadows, I'm exaggerating some of the cool of the shadow to be offset by the warmth of the light. And I love, I love that when I'm painting. I love seeing the, the contrast in shadows versus light and the, the warmth of the light always draws me into paint. So ultimately, I might spend a lot of the time of a, during a painting setting myself up so that I can put in the highlights. But what draws me to paint in the first place is the highlight. So there's prep work essentially to to get to where you can actually see the light now if i had put that light that color down on a white canvas with nothing having uh, been established in terms of dark it wouldn't stand out but as i put, just put it down you think oh wow yeah that is a really bright highlight the reason it looks so bright is because we've done so much work already to get the colors and the values in line with where we're going as as an overall painting. I'm adding a little bit more blue into this to show the reflected light from the sky and I always love to have variety in brush strokes, variety in color. So I will continue to vary what I'm putting down even though it's essentially the same surface you know, the road keeps going back in layers. I love, I love being able to show distance in a scene as well. And I, I think roads and alleys and pathways are a very fun thing to paint because often they meander back into the distance of a painting and they invite us to go on a trip in our imagination. So I love I love roads and I love the light crossing the roads. I love the dappled sunlight in different scenes. There's a rooftop up here, a second garage that is in the sunlight, at least the roof of the, the garage is in the sunlight on the left side. And then there's another house. It's actually across the street on the right. This is a scene from Indianapolis when I used to live in Indianapolis. 
And so it's it's wonderful to be able to see things in the world and then paint them. And what it does for me is it really helps me connect. I I love places where I've been. I love trips. I love places where I've lived. And yet sometimes we 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 observe beautiful things but we do it in passing and we don't always stop to appreciate what is there and one thing that art has done for me is that it has opened up my eyes to see beauty in places that I didn't always see beauty before before I started painting I don't think I ever would have thought oh man alleys are really interesting and beautiful but alleys became interesting because I saw another artist paint them and it intrigued me because I I thought man that scene is so beautiful but I never noticed an alley before and then all of a sudden I started looking at alleys a new way and the way that colors work together I I never noticed the way that the light hit the top of a tree before but then I started painting and I started looking up at trees and clouds. I started looking down at the way that the shadows were on the ground. I started looking at all sorts of aspects of nature and I observed beauty where I'd never seen beauty before. And this painting is one of those cases for me where I used to walk on this alley our house was not far from here at all and so I would observe the beautiful uh, things in the common places that I normally used to just walk past but art has allowed me to enjoy beauty and see beauty and then try to capture that beauty and what I love about it is that now I can share that beauty with you. You can see the beauty in this location and you can say, oh, maybe there's an alley close to my house. Maybe there's some rather mundane, common, ordinary place that is filled with majesty and beauty and I never actually stop to notice it. Or maybe there are people around you that haven't stopped to notice it, but you have, and your artwork is going to bring that beauty to life. You're going to be able to represent that common, ordinary place, and yet show the beauty that's there, and it's going to encourage and intrigue somebody else in that same observation. Because as it turns out, you are a creative person who has the opportunity to bring beauty and light and life into other people's lives. So I encourage you, no matter where you're coming in from, if you've been painting regularly or perhaps you've been in a slump, you've been feeling like you haven't been creating or doing your your artwork as much as you want and maybe it's been a long period of time I know that it can be hard I know that there's a lot of things in life that that need to be taken care of it's not just that they get in the way or some you know I could put some language like that it's actually that there's a lot of important things in life but art also is a way that you can share beauty and you can breathe life into your own heart because you are made to be creative. And so I just encourage you that your creativity is there for yourself, yes, but it's also there for other people around you. You can give beauty to others. So pick up your paintbrush, your whatever it is, pencils, graphite, clay, (laughs) sculpture, whatever your medium of choice is. And, And I encourage you just to keep Keep painting, keep going, keep working, keep creating, even if it feels like you're rusty and even if you haven't done it in a while, that's even more reason to say, now is the time. Pick up your paintbrush. Let's get going. Your voice matters 
and your perspective matters. So here we go with the final area that has not been covered yet, and that is the sky. So I'm bringing in some very light highlights, and the sky is a warm white. That'd be how I would describe what I'm thinking. But there are still highlights that I'm putting into the trees. Those trees, especially up high like that, they're getting a lot of that sunlight. They're catching more than anywhere else because they're up high. And other areas are getting shadow because there are objects and other trees and things like that. But up high, we are catching that brilliant light. So actually, the white that I'm putting in now is the sky. And everything else was leaves or trees, tree branches, things that are catching sunlight. But this light, 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 white, it's got a little bit of, uh, I believe I've got a little tiny bit of yellow in it, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I know that I like this contrast. So one of the things that I like in a painting is a very dark area that is almost black or black and all the way up to almost pure white or pure white because those are the characteristics like that is as much value contrast as you can put in a painting there's nothing darker or lighter than black and white and so if you live too much in the middle and you never have that high contrast your paintings will be dull and it's not necessarily that they will be bad. I'm not trying to say that, but they won't necessarily, they won't have the same vibrancy, the same contrast, the same uh, dynamic uh, feel as if you are using the full range of the value spectrum. So that's why I push that sky as light as I can. If you made it this far in the video, I commend you, I congratulate you, and I would love to invite you to, one, like the video and subscribe to the channel, but also come over to acrylicuniversity.com because we have a lot of free resources over there. We have a full-fledged membership that you can be part of. We run challenges frequently. There are many ways that we try to encourage and support artists just like you. And we want to see you grow. We want to see you flourish in your art. We want to see you become confident and courageous. And we want to see you do it. We want to see you do it with joy. Continue to grow as an artist and continue to flourish we want you to be able to go into your streets and alleys and up into the mountains and down into the valleys and in the deserts and on the ocean. We want you to take your life and your experiences and be able to see the beauty that is all around you and then to bring other people into it because you have a unique voice. You have a unique circle of people that are around you and they might not notice things unless you are the one that points them out and you share the beauty that's inside of you with them. And who knows, it might just be a, a long line of people who are activated and turned into uh, creative, life-giving people because of your beautiful creations that come out of you. So come on over. Check out what is happening at Acrylic University. There is something for you, and we would love to encourage you. So I'm bringing in the lightest kind of reflected light on top of that road at the very back. And I'm not looking so closely at the image for some of these details. Some of this I'm actually going and I'm thinking, what is going to make the painting as good as it can be not necessarily looking to say how do I copy this image exactly because my goal in painting is not to copy a photograph and your goal really should not be to copy a photograph either because there's a lot more to art 
than uh, what a camera can produce. And when you're talking about painting, uh, you, you have a vision, you have an interpretation, you have an experience. Some of the things that you might observe in real life might not get picked up by a camera, but your eyes can see things and your senses can experience something a little differently when you are there. And so you are trying to, I am trying to bring my experience into the painting process. I'm trying to bring what I saw, what I smelled, what I felt, the, the smell of the, the wind, whatever it is. I, I want to bring all of that into a painting. And I want to bring my sense of color, my sense of vibrancy, uh, whatever is going on. I want that to come into it and you as well have your own experiences, your own challenges, your own history, whatever it is that makes you you, that is what will come out eventually in your artwork. You are trying to discover your voice and that is one of my favorite things that I get to do with artists at Acrylic University is help them discover their voice. Who are you? What makes you tick? What are the styles that you're drawn to and how do you uniquely convey them through your artwork? There's a lot of people who can do a lot of things, but there's only one you. So be yourself and be yourself boldly.